executive judgment, okay? Uh, the perfect fulfillment is the seven last plagues. Maybe the perfect fulfillment is the destruction of the wicked at the end of the thousand years. But in any case, the great and dreadful day of the Lord is the close of probation. And the last promise in the, New T- in the Old Testament in Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and de- dreadful day of the Lord, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And the Jews, Jesus is dealing with this prophecy among other prophecies when he's explaining who Elijah was in their day and age. Was the great and dreadful day of the Lord to take place in the time of the Jews? Did John the Baptist know it? Yeah, what did he say? Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? That wrath was the wrath of God as illustrated in the destruction of Jerusalem from 66 to 70 A.D., which Jesus and Sister White identifies an illustration of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And before that great and dreadful day of the Lord, Elijah came in the person of John the Baptist. But all the prophets are speaking more about the end of the world than the days in which they lived. Page 20. Select the Messages, Book 1, page 412. The Jews tried to stop the proclamation of the message that had been predicted in the Word of God, but prophecy must be fulfilled. The Lord says, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Matthew 4, 5. Brothers, Malachi 4, 5. Malachi 4, 5. Ah, it's the history of 45. He's going to send Elijah before the history of 45. And the history of 45 is the history of the final president of the United States, which is the subject of the future for America. Somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah, and when he appears, men may say, you are too earnest. You do not interpret the scriptures in the proper way. Let me tell you how to teach your message. I will comment on that. There are many who cannot distinguish between the work of God and that of man. I shall tell the truth as God gives it to me, and I say now, if you continue to find fault, to have a spirit of variance, you will never know the truth. Jesus said to his disciples, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. They were not in a condition to appreciate sacred and eternal things because they were in a Laodicean condition. But Jesus promised to send the Comforter who would teach them all things and bring all things to their remembrance whatsoever he had said unto them. Brethren, we must put We must not put our dependence in man, see she from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? You may hang your helpless souls upon Jesus. It does not become us to drink from the fountain of the valley when there is a fountain in the mountain. Let us leave the lower streams. Let us come to the higher springs. If there is a point of truth that you do not understand upon which you do not agree, investigate, compare Scripture with Scripture, sink the shaft shaft of truth down deep into the mind of God's Word. You must lay yourselves and your opinions on the altar of God. Put away your preconceived ideas and let the Spirit of Heaven guide you into all truth. Now, this is all in the context of someone coming in the spirit of power of Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So... Page 21. 
I don't know what you guys were doing when I was a teenager. If some of you were teenagers in the United States, when I was a teenager in the United States, you'll know that there was a television show, and I used to watch television when I grew up because I didn't become a Christian until I was 25 years old. And the kids I hung out with could be mean, all right? And so there was a TV show, stupid TV show. I never liked that TV show, but everybody knew about that TV show. And there was a pig on that TV show. And his name was Arnold. <laughs> so I never liked the middle name Arnold much when I was growing up. But I'm here to tell you, I didn't name myself. I didn't name myself, brothers and sisters. That happened long before I knew anything. Jeffrey means, it's an old German name, meaning district or traveler, peaceful pledge or God's peace. Go to Matthew 10, 32 through 41. Easy now. I'm just making testimony that I didn't pick his name out, okay? 32. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I am come came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth the son or the daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he, take, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth not after me is not worthy of me. He that receiveth you, he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me him that he that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. There's one that's sent at the end of the world before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He's a traveler. And a traveler in the Bible is called an apostle. An apostle is different than a disciple. A disciple can be an apostle, but an apostle is one that is sent forth. He travels. A delegate, specifically an ambassador of the gospel, a messenger, he that is sent. Jeffrey means a traveler. Arnold, derived from an old German name meaning eagle power. Okay, eagle power. Eagle represents Rome. And Rome typified the United States. And the symbol of the United States is the eagle. And you've got scriptures there. Okay, a traveler that's connected to the understanding of the power of the eagle at the end of the world, which is America. You following the logic? The Lord shall bring a nation afar from the, the far, from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, the nations who, whose tongue you shall, thou shalt not understand. Deuteronomy 28, 49. By the spirit of inspiration, looking far down the ages, Moses pictured the terrible scenes of Israel's final overthrow as a nation and the destruction of Jerusalem by the armies of Rome. And then she quotes from Deuteronomy, where we've just read, associating Rome with this prediction, I'm saying the eagle is a symbol of Rome. But I'm saying that Rome typifies the United States. Amen. 
Pip. A seed of a fruit tree. Christ was the revealer of truth to the world. By him, the incorruptible seed, the word of God, was sown in the hearts of men. The seed is the word of God. Let the word of God speak to the people. Let those who have heard only traditions and human theories and maxims hear the voice of him whose word can renew the soul unto everlasting life. Christ Object Lessons, page 40. Seed, the word of God. Injure. Scandinavian for a farm or a field or more properly a meadow. For this is he that is spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, in the field, in the meadow. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. When you put this name together, it's the voice of the wilderness of the messenger sent with the sword of God's word to identify the future for America. Over here, in Millerite history, you can see a 220 associated with William Miller that takes you to 1831 when his message was formalized, 220 years after the King James Version was translated in 220 days. The translation of the King James Version took 220 days. 200 and, took 2,520 days. I'm sorry, 20, it took seven years. 2,520 days. 220 years later, Miller's formalizing his message. This 2,520 from started in 723 is coming through to here. I'm leaving off the line. This 2,520 that starts in 677 ends here. And in 1790, 1776, America starts. And 220 years later, the message of Future for America is formalized in the Time of the End magazine at the same point in the Waymark as the 220 years ended for Miller. The Time of the End here, with this 2520, is corresponding to the 126 here that ends in 1989. 126 being typifying the Here in 2014, this 126, it began in 1888, ends, right when the foundational work is ending. And at this point, at this point, the messenger suddenly comes to his temple, and at this point, the temple begins to be raised in our history. Now, the reason... If there's any ever a presentation I didn't want to do, it was this one for the obvious reason. But this has to be in place. It has to be in place because since people started leaving this movement from 2004 onward, invariably, they're going to acknowledge the reform lines every time almost. Yes, we believe the reform lines. Yes, we can see that Brother Pippinger was the one that formalized the message. But Brother Pippinger's went off in darkness. Or the one that starts the work doesn't always finish the work. So for whatever reason, Brother Pippinger becomes part of the controversy. And that's okay for whatever reason. I learned a long time ago how to shield myself from that kind of nonsense. That's why I don't ever surf the web. 
And that's why some of you have a large frustration factor of me not answering the phone. I don't answer phones. I haven't answered phones in years. I don't listen to that nonsense. I know I got my, my weaknesses and my faults, but most of you don't have any idea what those are. And the ones that are out there in the public arena, they're a bunch of foolishness that have been manufactured by people. It's now become a subject that people are going to lose their salvation over, and it needs to be put in place that these reform lines, the methodology of these reform lines, identify someone that's raised up to put these things in place, and in all those reform lines, it identifies that that person comes under a barrage of foolish attacks along the way, And these guys that are claiming that I'm going to go out in the darkness, they need to demonstrate it doctrinally and quit making those charges because the prophetic testimony shows that they are those that have been typified by Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and Miriam, and all those other illustrations in the Word of God. It's become part of the controversy now, and it needs to be put in place. And if you've ever thought there was a presentation that I didn't want to do, this is it. And if you understand that, then maybe you can understand why my wife wanted me to do this even ten times less than I didn't want to do it. But it's in place. And these guys that are fighting this message, they don't deny the role that I've played. But they're unwilling to let these reform lines demonstrate that they're the ones on the wrong side of the issue as soon as they start rebelling against that role. Because, brothers and sisters, come on. There isn't any man that could invent these lines and this message This is, they're not attacking me when, when they're at making this attack. This isn't about me. This message is divine. This is not human. <laughs>